Hi guys, welcome to my channel, Chrissy here. Today I'm painting a, a lovely scene for you today. I'm just using my airbrush just to get going. I'm working on a 16 by 11 size canvas, which is an A3. And I'm using my airbrush, I'm just putting a thin layer of ultramarine blue onto the white canvas. Now build this up in layers and I use a few stencils as well. So happy days there. I hope you enjoy this video, guys. If you do, leave us a thumbs up. I appreciate that a lot. So like I said, I'm just using some ultramarine blue just to get it going here. A few layers, nice thin layers. So I'm just working quite far back. I'm working at least about six, seven centimeters, in inches, sorry, away from the actual canvas. It looks nearer here because of the angle of the canvas, but I'm working quite far away. So I'm building this up just to apply some uh, nice, beautiful blue. And I really like this color blue that I'm using today. I'm using a golden ultramarine blue in the actual high floor. That works really great in my airbrush. So I've let that dry and I've come in with some uh, phthalo blue now in the same brand again in the high floor golden acrylics. I'm just putting a nice dark silhouette around the edges. So I've let that dry. I've got my little raw stencil out and I'm using a Conacridone magenta in the same paint as I mentioned earlier, just to get these stencils on. I'm doing it a bit closer here just to get a bit more of a nice vivid image applied. So I've let that dry completely. Now, Use quite a bit of glazing medium here and I've mixed this into some cobalt blue. It's a nice cobalt blue by Liquitex Basics. It's a nice thin paint which I really like for glazing. So I've just mixed some of that up with some glazing medium just to bring it all together and blend it all in and smooth it all out and then let it dry. So it's nice and dry and I've got my little dog on which is a hound I'm painting today, a Basset Hound. So I really like these dogs, I think they're dead cute. So I'm using some burnt umber and some red here just to get this nice rusty colour brown for the undercoat. So obviously we don't want in blue. Well, you could have in blue, but I'm not having in blue today. <laughs> I'm using a, just a flat brush to apply this application. There's some areas which are darker, that'd be more of a burnt umber, and some of the lighter mid-tones, it'd be more red and a tiny bit of orange mixed into that. Same here over on this side, so it's the same colour, burnt umber, with a tiny bit of red and some cadmium orange. And the lighter the orange you'll see, I've added obviously the less two colours, which is the burnt umber and the red. I'm just using a flat brush. I'm still using my flat brush to do the application, but any brush you're comfortable with, even an angle brush should be really cool as well. So same colors again, just getting all the tones and all the values right. So I'm still in the same colors. I'm just mixing up different values to get the shapes I'm looking for. I think this is really pretty as well. I mean, the dogs are gorgeous. Don't get me wrong, I like the dogs. But I think the colour of the dog also complements the background because you've got that nice, beautiful, vivid blue. And I think the oranges, obviously, because they're complementary colours, it looks really nice and sets the image off just nice. Give us a thumbs up, guys, if you enjoyed this video. I appreciate that, as always. And leave any comments, I'll get back to you as well. And if you want to check anything out underneath this video, there's links there. I have a Facebook group, which is awesome, and other links that you might be interested in. That's all underneath this video. Also, guys, if you have a playlist, you can create a playlist and add all your favourite paintings into there. Then it saves you going back, looking things up. It's a really cool feature in YouTube. And it's free to use, you just add to playlist, title what it is, sound like this dog painting, put it in there. You know, you might have other people in there that you like to watch as well. 
you can just add everybody together now you can just browse at your leisure and start painting your favorite pictures so now I've let that dry and I'm going in with a yellow oak and quite a bit of white here so I'm using titanium white and I've got a bit of raw sienna there which is raw sienna light just to give them little dark values around his nose but not too dark He was a bit darker on his muzzle because we want his little uh, whisker things to show up. So I've just added a, a tint more of burnt umber there. Still using my flat brush. Obviously you have to give it a swill out now and again because the paint does dry in your brush. So once you find your brush isn't working that well for you, that's the time to give it a, a rinse and a wash through. So I've gone here with a really dark colour, it's a burnt umber mix with some ultramarine blue. Just get that nice dark value for his nose. But you could use black also, but I haven't used black in this incident today. It looks black, but it's a really dark value by mixing them two colours. Same round his eyes. I'm making sure I've got all the nice darkness going round his eyes as well. So obviously, I want the highlights to show up in my mid tones. It gives the, the animal a feature, you know what I mean? Makes it more 3D, stands out, makes him look more realistic. But not many colours using this painting today at all, really. It's pretty basic colour palette. So I've gone to my detail brush just to get that nice orange glow in his eyes. I'm just using some cadmium orange and some red mixture there with a tint of tiny little bit of sienna. And the dark mixture again that I use for his nose for the actual pupils. That's burnt umber and uh, ultramarine blue. <laughs> he looks a bit goofy there, doesn't he? <laughs> he looks like Scooby-Doo. That's funny. <laughs> He's goggly eyed, but he won't be. Well, they are a bit goggly eyed, but he won't be as we uh, get going. <laughs> oh, made me laugh. So I'm still using that detail brush because he's got like a bit of textured fur going on there on top of his head on the white bit. So I thought this brush is working, so I'll stick with it. It's nice just using little dabbing strokes. It's a nice little round brush. And can you see how it builds up that nice texture? And you've got control over uh, what you actually put down as well because you can't overload these brushes because they're too small. So you're not going to get big blobs of paint. That's what I mean. So just little dabbing motions just to get that nice texture feel around his jowls. <laughs> his, his slobbering jowls. <laughs> oh, my friend has these dogs as well. I think they're really cute. A little darker value there because it's not as bright there around his muzzle. So I've just had a little bit more grey there just to get it a bit darker shade. But I want to bring it together so there's no harsh lines. Can you see how I'm overlapping? Where the dark shadow mixes into the lighter area. Just reshaping his mouth, bringing his little lip up a bit. Now, because they are wrinkly dogs, so you're going to have a bit of work here. But if you want a nice painting, you've got to put the effort in. That's what I say. I'm just concentrating on these actual folds of his skin. Because this is going to be more on the realistic side, but painterly. And I love how his nose is a real cool feature, just poking straight out of the canvas. I think it looks really cool. Same again with that little detail brush that I used for his fur around his face. I'm just adding that onto his nose to add them little highlights. They've got like little pits on the nose, you know what I mean? Some little dotted areas. I'm just applying them in as detail. I 
I'm just shading some of it back there because it just went a bit further than I wanted it to but you can do so just come back in and just darken that area again so to make sure it's a right nice dark value I'm breaking his nose up there a little bit because it's not a dead straight line you know what I mean there's bits of little fur growing over it and whatnot and what not, that's <laughs> a good word in it, what not. <laughs> and then putting them little details of uh, his little lips there, some fur on his little lips, or her lips, over he or she. And I'm concentrating on that area of his mouth and making sure I've got all my lines straight. If not, I come back in and correct anything I'm not happy with. So it just appears just to stop sometimes and look at your actual reference or image that you're actually doing. Just sit back, have a look at it, check all your shapes and think, yeah, that's all right. Or, yeah, that's a bit off a bit. Or I've got his eye too high. You know, just check mid midstream before you actually finish your painting because you don't want to finish it all and think, oh, well, that's wrong. I don't like that bit. But when you're about halfway done, I usually stop and check everything. And any alterations I want to do, I do it there and then. So I'm going in with some little highlights there in his eyes. Just being off white, it's not a pure white, it's just an off white. And I've come in with my soft filbert brush to just add some really nice texture here at the top of his head with that nice reddy orange colour. Like a nice rusty colour. It's not thick paint, so I can actually go over my dark values and do some nice soft blending so I don't have any harsh lines. So if you use too much thick paint, you'll go over your dark values and you'll have to keep coming back, putting them back in. If you just use a nice dry dusting of paint, just a thin layer, like a dry brush, you can uh, get away with that and just scoot over your dark values like I'm doing here. But they're still visible but not in your face visible you know it just gives it that more realistic feel you haven't got all them harsh lines everywhere harsh edges same on this side still a nice dry brush but very little paint when i got a little tiny bit of paint on my brush i like these soft filbert brushes because they hold a lot of paint So that's dry, so I'm coming back in with a lighter orange now, ready orange. So I've added a tiny bit more white to that and a tiny bit of yellow. Just to make it more of a yellowy orange rather than a ready orange. Which is suitable for this now for the actual uh, mid-tone highlights. Oh, it's coming together now, isn't it? Bless. They are cute, aren't they? Basset hounds. I like the little short stubby legs as well. If you like dogs, they do a little corgi as well. That's on my channel if you want to watch that. I'll link that in. I'll uh, put that at the top of the comment section for you in case you missed that one. The so same here. Like you said, can you see I've got a bit more yellowy here? But very little paint just to get them nice highlights applied now he's got a fold there just on the right side of that ear just under his eye so i want that pretty prominent but the rest i want it soft blended out like here at the bottom of his ears so i'm just doing a nice dusting of paint just changing hands there <laughs> left to right left to right here i make so i'll just do it with both hands Sometimes you'll see me painting with my left hand, sometimes you'll see me with my right, but I am a left-hander, but in case you're wondering. So here, on top of his head, I've gone a bit more lighter with that yellow-orange, as you've seen, but there I've got more of a ready tone, which I really like. 
there's more shadow down under his jowls and uh, on the right side of that ear. But under his neck, I've gone but more white. It's more, more of a creamy white, a grey, creamy colour white. So it's not pure white. I didn't want to get it too bright yet until I wanted to put my final highlights on. He's cute. <laughs> He's like looking up, going, please, can I have a snack? <laughs> I might be wanting to say, please, can I go out? I need a wee. So now I've gone into some Naples yellow here, which is a really nice colour. I like using Naples yellow. With a tiny little bit of white and a tiny bit of cadmium yellow. Just get that nice, soft, silky smoothness of his of the actual fur that they have. Because they're nice and smooth on the ears and the head. And I think it gives that nice velvet look. And I'm just tinting under that neck again with some of that Naples yellow. Now I'm back in with the glazing again, just to bring all that together. Just to soften anything that I didn't want too prominent. You'll have seen me do this multiple times if you follow me enough. I do tend to go in and do a full glaze over my actual image. With the colour that's actually in the painting, which will be obviously the orangey brown, be a tiny bit of uh, white, maybe, sometimes. But more glazing medium, obviously, than paint. You just need a tiny bit of paint. Compared to highlights there on his nose, just to make it stand out a bit more. I'm just doing some dark bits there, just to fill that in around his, his face so his whiskers will show up. Back to my really small detail brush there. And these should be the final highlights on his nose. So it is titanium, but it's not a pure titanium on its own. I still have it dulled down. I never use pure titanium much in my artwork. It's always usually tinted. If you've got your values correct, you won't need to use a really bright white. Some light reflections there in his eyes. A bit more of a yellowy colour. Uh, tint there. I hope you enjoyed this, guys. I really enjoyed painting this for you. And I hope to see you again soon. And uh, have a wonderful day. And I'll see you again on my next video. On screen now are two videos you may like to watch. And if you're not already subscribed, click on my face and be sure to click the icon bell to get a notification. As always, thanks for watching and create something wonderful. See you all soon on my next video.